Hi there and welcome back to coding mode. In this video, we are going to make this chats component. So here we are going to learn how to create this search component and also this list of chats. So let's get started right away. As you can see in the last part, we completed the sidebar. Now we need to start building our app. Okay, that means this component and along with that we will be building this chats or conversation in the next part. Now we need to start building our chats component inside this general app page. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this app component text. Okay. Then we are going to write a comment here that we are going to import a component named chats here. So for that purpose, I'm going to make a new component named chats. Okay. Right beside this general app page. And then I'm just going to create a functional component named chats here quickly. Then what we are going to do, we are going to use a box component okay and what is box box is basically like a div okay and it's coming from material ui library so let me explain why we are importing and using box here as you can see in our design here we have a box okay or a container which has a certain background so that's why we need to use it now i'm going to apply some styling onto it by using the sx prop which is also available in mui guidelines okay in the api of box so first of all i'm just going to give it a position of relative and a height of 100 percent okay and then i'm going to provide it a width of 320 here 320 means 320 pixels okay and then we also need to provide some background color to it so let's just quickly write background color and i'm going to just hard code it for now to f8 F A F F okay okay so we also need to provide some box shadow okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to provide it a box shadow of zero pixel max zero pixel in Y and two pixel and then I'm going to provide it a color okay in RGBA so it will be black with an opacity of twenty five percent. Now we also need to import this chats component inside our general app to see some visible changes on our page. Okay, so here I'm going to just use the chats component. Okay, that we have just created just like this. Let's save this and see what we get. Okay, now you can see a very faint line here. Okay, this is because of the box that we have just made. Right now we are going to work on the inner part. So let's now just write this chats and put this a stories icon button. Okay. So for that, we are going to go inside the chats and then here, and then here we are going to just use a stack. Okay. Because again, we need to align two things this text and this icon button in horizontal direction. Okay. So whenever we need to align something in horizontal or vertical direction, then we use this stack component. Okay. So this is just going to make it easy for us to align things horizontally and vertically so let's now put typography inside it okay so typography is basically for writing different types of text okay and it is again coming from the material UI library so we are going to write chats here let's now see it okay we get it now we need it slightly in a different manner so i'm going to assign a variant of h5 to it okay let's now see how it looks and yeah it's looking good right now and then we also need an icon button okay that is story the icon button so for that i'm going to again import the icon button from the material ui library okay it is basically going to allow us to click on an icon okay so here we need this stories icon right we are using this phosphor icons library okay so let me just search that icon for you so we are going to write circle and you can see this circle dash okay so we are going to import this and use it right here circle dash okay from phosphor react so as you can see we have imported it from the phosphor react library and we have already installed that in our previous part of this video as you can see now we have this icon button but right now it's not aligned properly and also it's taking full width so let's fix that so what i'm going to do i'm going to pass some props inside this stack so the first one will be direction row because i want these two things to be aligned in a row and i also want these to be 
aligned aligned at the center that means the horizontal line passing through them should coincide okay now what i'm going to do for that i'm just going to write align items and then give it a property of center okay now these are aligned horizontally we also need to put them at the extreme end so for that i'm going to give it a property of justify content space between okay so that should do the job now we also need some padding as you can see this is actually there is no space so for that i am just going to wrap it inside a stack okay and then we are going to provide it some padding so for that i am going to pass this p3 prop which means padding of three from all sides and this looks good right now now next thing that we need to do here is to create this search component so let's see how we can do this so for doing this we are going to create some style component i have already written the code for creating this search bar so i'm just going to write it here and then i'm going to explain it to you first of all let's import this style okay and it's going to come from the styles module inside material ui so let's write here at the rate mui slash material and then styles okay we also need this alpha alpha is basically will be used to change the opacity of different colors and it's again going to come from the same module the styles inside material ui now we also need this input base component and it's going to come from the material ui library now let me explain what all of these three style component are going to do for us okay so this search is basically just a container okay it's made from the div we have just applied some styling to it like we have specified position relative some border radius background color margin and width okay and then we have a style input base input base is going to provide us the functionality to write something okay and the blinking cursor that we have in all of our inputs text inputs and then this search icon wrapper is going to allow us to place this search icon at the start okay since we have specified here that the position is going to be absolute and then we have also and then we also have this padding so it's going to be situated at the top left and then we have specified this padding okay and it has 500 percent then these additional properties okay we are just going to place a stack okay inside that we will be making our search component and i'm just going to provide it a width of 100 percent like this then we are going to use this search component which is a style component that we have just created okay and inside this you can see we have used the search component now we are going to place this search icon wrapper okay so let's use this search icon wrapper component okay and inside this i'm going to place this magnifying glass or this search icon okay so it's again going to come from our icons library that we are using in this project that is phosphor icons so i'm going to write its name here magnifying glass and you can see it's coming from phosphor react library so let's select this okay and uh, after that i'm going to give it a color okay so right now i'm just going to hard code it again then we will take it from the theme okay that looks good now one last thing that we need to do we also need to provide the functionality to write something okay inside our component search component so for that purpose we have created this style input base now i'm going to provide it a placeholder okay and inside that placeholder we are going to show search dash this dash and as you can see we have got this search component with this nice search icon okay now as you can see that this component this chat and icon button and this search they are not properly spaced they don't have a spacing in between them so for that i'm going to provide a spacing of let's say two to their parent okay this parent is tag now you can see that we have introduced some spacing between them okay now let's get on to this third part where we need to create this icon button and this archive button along with this divider so for that we are again going to write a stack because 
we need to align things in horizontal and vertical directions and inside that we are going to use archive box icon which is again going to come from the phosphor react library okay and then we need to provide it some size okay so we are going to provide 24 that means 24 pixels you can see we have got this icon and then we also need this archived button so for that i'm just going to use the button from the material ui library okay just like that and it's imported from the material ui package okay as you can see there is no text here so i'm just going to write the appropriate text okay that is archive now the by default its variant is text okay just like we want it here no outline no background right now there is one thing we need to align this icon and this button horizontally so we are going to wrap it inside another stack okay and then we are going to provide it a direction of row and you can see it now it's in a row but we also need to provide it align item center so that line passing through their centers horizontally will coincide so let's provide this align item center okay now we also need some spacing between these two for that we are going to provide it a spacing of one and a half okay and as you can as you already know this one and a half will translate into one and a half multiplied by eight okay that means 12 pixels now there is some space of 12 pixel between these we also need a fine line here as you can see in our design this is going to come from a component known as divider which is again going to be provided by material ui library so let's write it here divider and i'm going to import it from material ui now you can see we have this divider as well but there is no spacing between the divider and this upper stack so again we are going to provide some spacing to this stack and the divider in between these two we want some spacing so i'm going to provide a spacing prop to its parent and i'm going to give it a value of one one means eight pixel and now this looks fine let's now see how we can build this individual chat okay this chat component for that we are going to create it inside this file okay a separate chat element component so let me just quickly write it so we have named our component individual chat component as chat element then we are again going to return some jsx inside it and obviously since we have this kind of a box to which we have to provide this background so we are going to use again the box element which is going to come from material real library then we need to provide it some styling so for that purpose i'm going to use this sx prop okay now let's also use it right here okay so just after this component that we just created i'm going to write another stack here okay and let me provide it a direction of column which is also by default okay so let's just use it right here so we can see it on our screen okay so nothing is visible right now because there is no content and also there is no height width and background for this box so now i'm going to provide it a width of 100 percent 100 percent means it's going to take the full width available to it and then we also need to provide some border radius okay the border radius i'm going to write one so it will be one times eight that means eight pixels okay and then the background color for background color let's just use the hard coded value white for right now okay let's also provide a height of let's say 60 now you can see this very faint white box okay so we have created this just now i'm also going to provide it some padding okay so this will be another prop outside of sx so i'm just going to write p2 that means 2 times 8 16 pixels now we need to think about how we can create this avatar component and how to write this things okay and also render this badge so for that you can see here at mui.com i have opened avatar component 
and inside avatar there is a variant called with wedge so how we can use this we are just going to create a styled wedge a style component okay and we are going to wrap it above the normal avatar component okay that is also provided by the mui library so let's get started by using the avatar component so here i am going to write avatar which is going to come from mui okay then we also need to provide it some source okay so if we don't provide source then it's just going to show this type of avatar now i am going to provide it a source and it's just going to be a random image from the faker library so we have imported this faker library at the top of our file okay then i'm going to just use it here now after this avatar is visible we are going to create this type of as you can see here we have a batch okay and it has this ripple effect so we are going to create this using the style component okay so for that i'm just going to take this code and going to explain it to you how it is working so we have just used this style okay it is going to come from the styles module inside materially wise and then we have passed the normal batch component which is also coming from materially wise and then we have called this hoc okay or higher order function basically then what it's going to do we have extracted or destructured this theme and then we are accessing different classes okay like mui batch okay and then providing it some css properties and there is also an animation ripple effect okay so we have created this and we are using it like this using this animation property okay so let's save this and now we are going to wrap our avatar component with this styled batch component or style component that we have just created okay and we also need to provide some props to it in order for it to work properly so as you can see we need to provide an overlap property okay and it's going to be circular because we want it to leave some space okay when it's overlapping we need this white space okay when it's overlapped and we also need to define this anchor position okay or anchor origin this is vertically at the bottom and horizontally at the right so what this is going to do it's going to locate the position of this batch okay and after that we also have a variant okay so variant here is going to be dot because we want a circular batch so let's just get these props okay and put it here inside our style batch now let's see now we have this nice little batch okay and it's looking pretty good for now now we need to think how we can place this kind of name and this message along with the time and this under account we'll need to align few things horizontally and vertically so i'm just going to introduce some stacks here okay so be ready with me so first of all we are going to use a stack okay to wrap all of the things inside this box and to this box i'm going to provide a direction of row okay and a spacing of two and align items center along with justify content space between this is just normal css okay so now what we are going to do we are going to group this avatar with batch and these two text in one stack and this time along with this count in one stack and then we have aligned them horizontally and we have justified the spacing between them okay so this part will be at the left and this part will be at the right okay so that's what this stack is going to do for us now we also need one extra stack to group the style wedge along with the typography okay so let me place this style wedge along with avatar inside this stack and now we need to provide it a direction of row okay and then a spacing of two because obviously we need some spacing between this avatar and this text okay now as you can see these texts are vertically aligned and we need to group them together so for that i'm going to again use a stack okay and then place typography component to render this text onto our screen so for this stack i'm just going to provide it a spacing of 0.3 okay and then i'm going to just use typography which is again a component from material ui okay then 
we would write some name like Shreyans, my name. Okay, so it's visible, but we need it to be styled in this specific manner. For that, we are going to provide a variant prop. Okay, to this name, and I'm going to provide a variant of subtitle too. Remember, you can provide certain fixed variant. Okay. And you can find it on material UI. Let me just show it to you. If you search typography on MUI.com, then you are going to see this documentation. Here you can find we have different types of typographies defined for us inside material UI. It's from H1 to H6. Then we have subtitle 1, subtitle 2, body, okay, and button text caption over there. So we are just using that. Okay. Now it's looking pretty good. Let's also render this message. For that, I'm just going to use this typography as it is i'm just going to change this variant only okay so this variant is now going to be caption and let's write a message here so how are you okay this looks pretty good to me and yeah it's looking nice now we just need to create this time okay and also this badge with the red hundred count so let's format our code here then i'm going to just create another stack okay this will be inside this the outer stack okay which has a property of justify content space with me so we have placed a stack right here now i'm going to provide it a spacing of two and since we are going to align this last theme okay or last uh, conversation time along with this counter in vertical direction so i'm just going to leave its direction to column which is by default okay then i'm just also going to Say align items center. Okay, because we want this to be aligned with the center line. Now we need to write a typography component in order to render this type of text onto the screen. So I'm just going to use this typography component from Material UI. Okay. Then let's put some time here like 936. Now you can see it's a bit large. So I'm going to provide it some styling. So let's use this SX prop, which we can use inside all of our components coming from Material UI. I'm going to provide it a font weight of 600 and a variant of caption. It's looking nice right now. Next thing we need to do is to introduce this badge. So for that, I'm just going to use a normal badge component from Material UI. Okay. And then we need to provide it some props. So I'm going to provide it color primary okay and then we also need to provide a required prop which is batch content and uh, let's say we have 200 chats right now so i have written two here and you can see we have this nice little 100 count here this is looking really cool okay now there is one last thing that we need to do i need to remove this height which was hard coded okay previously after I've done that, it's looking pretty nicely formatted. Let's now use this chat component, a chat element that we just created to render this kind of list in which we have two sections, print chats and all chats. So what we are going to do, we are going to use this chat element component. Okay. Right now we are rendering it directly here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce a stack. Okay. A stack to group all the print chats inside one group and all other chats inside other group so for this i'm i've taken this stack i'm going to provide it a spacing of 2.4 that means 2.4 multiplied by 8 pixels okay and then inside it i'm going to write this typography component okay so this typography component is going to allow us to write this print stack okay i've written it like this now let's see we got this but we need to change its styling so first of all i'm going to provide it a variant okay so it will apply some automatic styling that is defined for subtitle 2 okay now it's close to what we want but we also need to change its color so i'm going to use this sx prop to define some css okay so i'm going to give it a color of 6767 okay and now it's looking just like we wanted it to be okay now for that we need to render chat element inside it but for that we would need a list okay 
so i have already done that work for you you can go to this data directory okay then inside this index here yes, we have something called chat list inside this chat list you can see i have provided some id for each chat and an image to display name okay the message that we want to display time okay under count if it's print or the person is online or not so on the basis of this chat list we are going to render our unread chats okay so let's just use that chat list okay we are going to import it from the data directory as you can see we have imported it from the data directory at the top of our file now i'm going to filter out all those chats which are pinned okay because we all only need to render pinned chats in this stack so i'm just going to filter it out on the basis of this field pin okay i've just shown you we have a boolean field pin which is either true or false so i have taken only those chats which are pinned and now i'm going to map over them so i call this map function okay now what we are going to do we are going to render this chat element inside this so just return this and let's see what we get onto our screen now we have two pinned chats onto our screen also i made a typo here that's why you can see there is no spacing here so let's fix that and now we have some nice spacing here there is one more thing we have right now hard coded these values so let's take it from the element okay each chat they have their own property so we are just going to take that pass it as a prop here okay like this and then we will receive all of this into our chat element component here so i'm just going to destructure it with the same name that we have written here for the property okay so let's just quickly write here id name image message time unread online okay so we are going to need this now let's customize it so what we are going to do we are first going to put the actual name that we are getting as a prop and the message okay this time hundred count okay and we also need to render this style wedge only if the person is online so what i'm going to do i'm going to write a conditional statement here i'm going to say if the person is online then render this avatar with the style wedge otherwise we just need to render avatar only okay let's see and now it's you can see this person is online so we have this wedge but this person is not online second person so there is no wedge we also need to fix one thing okay so let's now focus on rendering this list down below okay all chats list so back here i'm going to now repeat the same thing okay down here so let's just copy it okay and use it here i'm going to change this text to all chats we will have this chat list and the only difference here will be we are going to select all those chats which are not pinned okay and render this inside all chats now we have this and the only thing that we need to do here is to introduce this scroll bar okay we don't want our whole page to be scrollable we want only this section to be scrollable for that what we are going to do we are going to provide some styling to this stack which will make only this particular stack scrollable that means these chats okay so let's start by providing property flex grow so what flex grow is going to do it's going to allow it to take all of the available space vertically okay and then we also need to provide overflow and it's going to be a scroll overflow behavior will be scroll it means if the content is bigger than the total height then it's going to be automatically introduce a scroll here right and we also need to define its height so we have written this height okay then we are going to give it 100% so 100% of its parent and its parent has 100 vh so this 100% is going to be the height of its parent okay so let's also fix this we need to provide this 100 vh height to this stack okay which is the direct parent of that stack onto which we have applied flex pro now you can see we don't have a full page scroll we are we can see a scroll only here but there is one thing this scroll right now is looking very ugly okay we have this black scroll bar 
React simple bar. Okay, so we are going to use that here. Let me show it to you. We have already created this component scroll bar. Okay, and it's going to use a library known as simple bar React. It allows us to customize this scroll bar. Okay, so you can see we are using this library now. We have already installed this. You can see it inside the package JSON. Okay, and now I have created a custom style component using this simple bar React. We have applied certain styling to it. Okay, and then we have just exported it down here. Now we are going to use it inside this. We will be wrapping both of these stacks. Okay, this stack as well as this stack with simple bar style, which is again a component. So I'm going to just wrap it with the simple bar style, which is coming from components scroll bar. Okay, let's cut it and paste it here. Okay, then what I'm going to do, it can take several properties like timeout. That means after what time we want this to be disappear automatically. So I want it to disappear after half second. That means 500 milliseconds. Okay, and we also need to provide this click on track false. Now you can see we have this nice scroll bar which is going to automatically disappear after a half second. Okay. Now there is one more thing we need to provide some spacing between pin chats and all chats. Okay. So for that, for that I'm going to give it a spacing of two, which is a stack, which is the parent of these two components in which, between which we want some space. So now there is one more thing that we want to do. If we switch the theme, then you can see this background color doesn't change and also this chat elements color background color doesn't change because we have hard coded it so we are going to fix it now okay so let's get on to it so firstly about this background color so we need to use our theme here i'm going to again use it via this use theme hook okay which is going to come from material ui styles module okay so you can see we are going to import it from material UI styles module. Okay. Now we have access to our theme inside this component. Now what we can do, I can just write here if theme dot palette dot mode is light. Okay. Then I need to render our box with this background color. Otherwise, I want it to be theme dot palette dot background dot paper okay so this is basically a color that we have defined inside our theme now you can see it's looking nice okay same thing needs to be done with this so i'm just going to pass i'm just going to use this theme again inside my chat element so let's write it here then what we are going to do we are going to write that same condition here okay if it's light then we want that white color otherwise we are going to need the default background color okay so that will be theme dot palette dot background dot default okay and it's looking so cool right now we can also do the same thing with this search component so let's get it done quickly okay so we have this search box here okay so what we are going to do we are just going to change from change it from the paper to default color and now it's looking much better I hope you enjoyed watching this and how we created this. You can find the code to this on the GitHub repo. For it, I am going to paste the link into the description of this video. If you want to know how we are going to build this next part of this application, then stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to like this video and share it with your friends. I hope you are as excited as I am to continue this series. See you in the next video.